Today in RL Craft, we're basically just going to make a ton of stuff. We do of course have our trusty notebook up here. And I have lots of things in here. I am of course going to come over here to the coolant cave, which is the last thing on our list. I basically just made this so I can sit here and not die. Because if I go into the house, I think I still have it. Let's see if I can find the thing. I actually don't know where it's gone, but I did make a season compass. Uh, that's not redstone. I guess we can make another one. Kind of sucks that I need to make another one, but I don't know where the other's gone. There we go, season clock. So it is now currently mid-summer. It is the hottest it's ever going to get right now. And even just walking about is enough to give me hypothermia. So next in the book, we have Explore New Village, plenty of things to see around it. I did find the Waystone in the New Village. It has some bizarre name that I'm not even going to try to pronounce. But there's a ton of structures around it that will make for really good exploration targets. So much better than what we have around Merbiok, because I don't actually have to swim to get to any of it, and I'm not surrounded on all sides by dragons. The backpack is the source of this encumbered thing up in the top left, and you can see in the very bottom right a tiny icon which tells me that if I shift and right click here, I drop a bag on the floor, which I can fill with pretty much anything I want to, and then just crouch and break, and it's on my back again. Uh, so then whenever I die, all of the stuff that was in that bag just gets dropped inside the bag still, it doesn't get catapulted everywhere, so that's very handy. We need to get one more level to be able to equip Iron Armor. So if you check in skills here, we're 8 attack, 7 defense, we're very close. The farming platform we're going to expand, but I would like to check as well in better questing if there's anything that's actually useful we can move in towards. Because I've been completing a lot of different stuff and these quests have actually been quite useful to give me a bit more direction in what I should be doing next. For example, I can make fruit juices. Like standing on them with a barrel on the ground with my feet, and I can make syrup with purified water and sugar. I'm wondering as well if we should maybe move to the new village. I haven't built too much stuff in Mermiok, I've pretty much just taken over a house and built farms here. We could always come back to make use of the farms, but I feel like the other area is just a bit more useful, a bit better. And also if you were to come out over here, you'll notice that Mermiok's pretty much abandoned now. The only place we can see anything spawn is way up there. Like occasionally you'll see there's an Aegis up there, which tells us that all of the villagers are over there now. What I think has happened is they've all either drowned, been killed by sea creatures, been killed by zombies over there, or have fallen down this path, and are just dead. So the few left are up in those buildings over that way. So it may be worth going to the other village, just because it's actually a village, and people still live there. So on page two, we have things that I want to build. So bobby pins we're going to start with. So we use these to pick locks, and they're just a lot of sticks, which is quite handy. And if you remember in the towers we were looking in before, there were loads of locks I couldn't get past. So I think... like that? We'll make a few of these, just because I'm sure they probably break. So we have four of them. And that completes a quest, thankfully. I would like to start making healing salves, and I have leveled up to level 2 magic, because that's what you need to be able to use them. You see, down here, level 2. So I'm level 2 everything now. But a healing salve is just a bowl and then some aloe vera and a cactus, I think it's probably the easiest way to get this. Unless I start bone meal and ground to get dandelions and other flowers. To be fair, I might actually have some other flowers right now. There are some dandelions in the yell pen. So it's the aloe, the poppy, the dandelion and the bowl. And we've made two healing salves. So these don't actually stack, unfortunately. But that is the quest complete. So these things I'm pretty sure just restore hearts. I don't know if they heal limbs. 
I'm assuming they do because of how the healing system has been changed. It would be weird to have two conflicting healing molds. Okay, next up, Greenhouse Glass. This is something that will definitely help us with farming in the long run. Greenhouse Glass allows crops underneath it to grow in any season. So it's just some kind of blue dye, some kind of glass, and some kind of wood. It looks like some kind of blue dye specifically, which is made out of lapis and cactus, or blue flowers, so just blue and green dye. I think I have a little bit of lapis already. We have one piece. So that's something we're going to have to aim towards in the future. But when the seasons change and we can't normally grow plants for food anymore, that will let us continue to grow things. And the last thing I want to make is a crossbow. Now there are quite a few of these, but we could probably just make a basic one quite easily. I mean, just look at all of them. Maybe an iron strengthened one. So we need a handle, some iron, a bow, some kind of wood. And the handle is just a wool and a stick. Okay, that seems easy enough to do. We do need some more sticks. Oh, and you may notice there are some odd patches in the floor. Um, don't right click on planks with a hammer. Otherwise it turns into a stick. Just the one. Let's chop down a tree. Hopefully not get killed by a giant tree. I think we're more likely to get cooked to death first. Okay, I think I should probably shear the Yale. Just because we're going to need a bit more wool for this. I'll also take one of these bows because we're going to need one of those. Some of these Yale are level 2 now. I guess the ones that I've been breeding are now spawning in at a higher level because I guess there must be like an internal world level, right? And after we make so much progress, the world level increases. Oh, also, uh, after I finished up yesterday, we had a sea serpent come and attack Mermiok. It basically just landed on this farm and just like rolled through all the crops. And that's why nothing's really grown. Because I just had to replant everything. Oh, I did do a quest as well. And got a ton of emeralds. It was just handing in stone, like cobblestone. And I got all of that, which was a massive steal. So I should probably go and check that bounty board, actually. See if there's anything else up there we can grab. So we have slime kills, iron glaive. How do we make an iron glaive? It's just a pole and some ingots, which is made out of wool and sticks. You can make it with string as well. What do I get for it? Fishing rod and heating goo. Uh, no thank you, I do not need anything that heats me up right now. I literally had to make a hole in a wall to not overheat constantly. Alright, I guess we can put the book back up in its frame for now, just so we don't lose it. And we can start work on this crossbow. We'll do the iron strengthened one. So the handle is just one stick and a string, which is easy enough to do. There we go, that's a handle. That's also a quest, apparently. So then we just need a log, two string, a bow, and that handle. Two iron ingots as well. We do need agility four for this, unfortunately. The regular crossbow is just agility two. And we don't need a bow for that either. I do wonder though, how easy it would be to get agility four. Let's see, agility three, so we just need level four right now. That can stay in there. Let's just go do a bit of farming now it's dark. And hopefully we won't cook alive. See if we can get up to that level. Alright, well that got us plenty of levels pretty quickly. Just let me fill that in, and then we can grab agility level 4. We're halfway towards getting our next stage of defense still as well, so we're not doing too bad overall. Wait, is that rotating depending on where I'm stood? It is. That's kind of odd. But that is a crossbow. The Bender of the 15th Century. Okay, and Daryl Dixon's True Love. I don't really know what any of that means, but I'm sure somebody will tell me. So now I need to make bolts, I think. 
So there's wooden error, iron error, diamond error, explosive error, and just bolts, which are iron nuggets, feathers, and iron ingots. Here we go, there's eight feathers there. This is what we really need a chicken farm for though, just to be able to actually make more of these. Because it seems to me like this might actually be a really good ranged weapon. Well, there we go, that's 32 bolts. Best damage is 2, range is 1.25 times, and it has armor piercing. So I, do I right click to load? Okay, I think we're loaded, and then... Okay, and I can get the bolt back. Seems simple enough to use. So I think now we should have a little wander to these towers around here and see if I can open some of these chests. Just because I'm very curious what kind of stuff they'll have inside. And it seems like we get new bounties every day. Alright, I don't know how quick the bounty board fills up, but I know that some of them expire over time, so it might empty itself back out quick enough as well. But anyway, let's give this a go. Too complex for this lockpick. So how do I get better ones then? Oh, I can make iron lockpicks out of nuggets. Steel ones, gold ones, diamond ones. So I'm guessing that diamond ones can unlock everything. And I need to find a, a wooden lock for this pick. I know that there's one of those in this town somewhere. I just need to not cook alive by the time I find it. Oh, there's a diamond one here that I can actually pick. Uh, never mind. That doesn't lock. Okay, I have one lock pick left. I think I need to find a different lock. It looks like it works as if it's the the Morrowind lock picking, like you have to find the right uh, the right tumbler to lock up. Oh dear. Also, I died there because my head ran out of health, not because I ran out of hearts. Like the hypothermia was attacking my head, like the bottom right limb indicator. If your head or your body hits zero, then you die regardless of how much health you have left. Which means that things like skeletons can one-shot you by shooting you in the face. I'm gonna have a quick look up the wizard tower here, because I think that's where the wooden lock was. If it's not, then we'll just move on. Because I'll be out of lockpicks if I fail at this anywhere. Ah oh yeah, here we go. Okay, so this one only has three tumblers. Okay, that's one. Um, ouch. Did that electrocute me? Well, I need more lockpicks, but we have a way to make it work. So I guess I needed to do the one on the left after that? Okay, I have three more, and I'm gonna be honest, this season has started to really bug me. I need it to not be mid-summer anymore, because I don't want to have to spend like half of my playtime in this cave. I'll tell you what, let's test out one of these healing salves. So what did that do? Did that heal some of my limbs? I think it might have. It did have several uses. Okay, let's use this one again. Oh, it is healing my limbs. It healed, like, my feet first, weirdly enough. Okay, so that one was first, then that one, then that one, and press escape. And the chest's open. And it just had a lot of useless redstone junk in it. Okay, well, cool, I guess. Alright, we might not have time for it today, but I'm just going to chill out in this water for a little bit. Just cool down until I can sleep, and then we'll go to the other village, and I'll show you some of the other stuff that I've scoped out that we can explore some other time. Now that we have the crossbow, we're looking pretty good on that front. So we just need to get that last level in defense, so we can outfit ourselves in full iron gear. And I think we'll be ready to start doing some of the dungeons. So using the waste on, we can now go to... Zed Salmarok? Zed Salmarok? Sure, it's Zed Salmarok. And this place is just immediately more alive. I mean, there's actual villagers here for starters. The only quest is to kill strays. I don't know what a stray is. Right, so Mermiok is, I believe, in that direction. It's not that far away. I can literally just, like, run over the hill and get back there. But there's tons of barrels around here and stuff which have useful loot in them. And I haven't even gone up this tower yet, I don't think. So we'll quickly go loot this. Oh, and now that I've used one of those waystones to teleport, 
it's set as my spawn point. So if I die in here, then I'll be right next to the teleporter, so I can come straight back, which is very handy. A lot of food, not bad. And there's a lock here. I wonder if, um... I wonder if these lockpicks can get in there. Um, ouch. Okay, I'm not gonna do that again. Look at my head. My head's been absolutely battered. Um, well, it's half health, even. Okay, let's go take a dip. Because we're now hypothermic. Uh, oh, that's a horse. So, as you can see out here, there's some kind of blue structure. And there's like an underground to it as well. It's almost like an underground village, I guess. There's some more sirens there. But that collapsed cross shape is what I believe to be a ship mast. There are actually a couple sunken ships around the waters in this area, which will make for nice targets to explore. There are, I think, a few more structures out in this desert over here. I'm not going to go too far into it because, well, we're going to burn to death. But there are a few more, like, temples and ruins and stuff that I spotted. That there, I'm pretty sure, is the same tower as the other village, as Mermiok. So you can see there's the wizard tower right next to it. So home is literally right over there. That's how close we are. But look at all this field land out the back here. Obviously there's all the T-Rexes in the way, so we can't really build in it right now. Oh, there's another shipwreck right here. Oh no. I might be about to die. No, let me out of the water. Okay. Don't let me out of the water then, that's fine. But yeah, as you can see, right next to the teleporter. So the corpse run is not that bad. I completely understand the whole, when this limb hits zero, you die thing. But sometimes it does feel like enemies do one-shot you a bit too quickly still. Like, none of my limbs were zeroed out there. Well, my body's about to be. I guess while I'm here, I'll just loot up the rest of this town and... see how much more useful stuff there is for me to take. Well, there's nothing in these chests I've checked here already. I don't want to take too much stuff, just in case I do decide to move over here. But for the time being, we're probably going to stay in Mermiarch for a couple more days. Right, just look at all this raw food. Some armor there. Gold bar, I'll take that. I do get the impression that it- oh, clock. I get the impression it might be easiest to stay in Mermiarch until summer passes. Since I'm right next to the ocean and can cool down easily. I don't have as ready access to water in this area. Yeah, so it might just be a bit easier to hold off of traveling over until then. And that, of course, gives me a bit of time to consider how I'm going to move everything over. What I'm going to bring and what I'm going to leave. And if I want to make my own house or steal another one. Well, it looks like I'm about to die of hypothermia again. I've put all my stuff in my bag at the bottom of the tower. So while we're just slowly waiting to die, I guess I'll sign off for today. Many thanks as always to the members and pledges for their continued support, and we'll catch you next time.